je vais vous parler d'anthropologie maritime. I'm going to tell you about maritime anthropology. Maritime anthropology is often a problem, considered as a problem, because of two, uh, the position of two elements. Anthropology, on the one hand, which studies the various aspects of human societies, and uh, we talk about uh, anthropology of uh, the similarities, economic and political anthropology, and uh, the sea, which is falls more on the, in the category of natural sciences. Now, for a few decades, the uh, borders between the objects of the one and the other discipline have become more permeable. And therefore, this oxymoric association is full of definitions uh, such as ethnozoology, ethnobotanics, and more recently, nature anthropology demonstrate. Yet, in spite of this trend, see, the sea still occupies a different place and only going back to epistemology foundations, cultural foundations of our Western societies, would be able to explain the role played by uh, the sea. Therefore, it always sounds strange to talk about uh, maritime or marine anthropology because that means that we need to consider this space which has been invaded by man and culture as um, something that for a long time was considered uh, in the Western world as the wild space. The sea has been crossed used, we have even exhausted it resources, but no one thought that the sea could be domesticated. Modern examples uh, are numerous. People claim to have uh, indigenous rights over the sea, and this demonstrates quite the contrary of what was thought originally. It leads us to think and wonder about the way these various uh, societies and cultures appropriate the uh, maritime environment. This is one of the objectives of modern sea maritime anthropology, showing through monographic or comparative studies the variety of knowledges and uses uh, fostered by the sea, as well as the transformations due to a number of uh, modern drivers, for instance, the emergence of the law of the sea, the creation of uh, marine protected spaces, or offshore prospection and exploration. In order to understand why the sea as a space has been invaded by man, seas should be understood as something which functions as a support of various representations. In his book, The Territory of the World, Alain Corbin tries to show the content and the various representations associated with the sea in the Western culture. He starts from antique myths until the coasts became um, more popular and people went to bathe in the sea and do thermal um, spa treatments, and he explains why the space uh, was invaded by man in a fluctuating way. Now, the sea and the representation is a representation space that varies in uh, the space. John Mack, the sea, a cultural history, drills through the various representations associated with the sea as a space in geographical areas which are very different, Europe, the Fiji Islands, Australia or Japan. In Europe, as we have briefly understood, the sea is considered as a menacing, threatening uh, space uh, Witherer with no roads, as has been said, whereas in the Fiji Islands, the sea is an open space, a connection between men, and the uh, fisherman's body is directly linked with the sea. In Australia, the sea is uh, wrought of myth, itineraries of uh, dream, Characters and in the sea in Japan, the sea is too open to be soothing and favorable for contemplation. So, every human population has its own way of um, 
appropriating the uh, sea and uh, a field of science such as maritime anthropology has been divided between various approaches. In the 80s, where this sub-discipline emerges, two documents are published showing the different approach on a similar object. On the one hand, we have Yvan Breton's uh, writings uh, defining the false lines of a French and Canadian maritime, maritime anthropology, where the relationship between man and the sea are considered uh, under the angle, the technical and socio-economical angle. On the other hand, we have uh, Robert Johannes, the uh, leader of uh, maritime anthropology, which uh, wants to understand the relationship between man and the sea through epistemological knowledge using all of the knowledge associated with this environment. And this second approach, Johannes's approach, is the one associated with modern upheavals. This is the direction we go in, an analysis and a gathering of traditional and local knowledge connected with the sea, rehabilitating the various societies associated with this environment. In conclusion, I believe that three elements matter, really, and must be remembered. A definition, the amplitude of the uh, thought that has been fueling this uh, field of research, maritime anthropology, showing that uh, human societies have uh, built a kind of very complex relationship with the sea, which is being social, socialized, socialized in a new way every time. Maritime anthropology must be an open field, careful of social realities, be they uh, technical, social, or economic, which shape human societies. Maritime anthropology is no exception to the rule of uh, all disciplinary fields regarding anthropology because it is the trustee of cultural paradigms and uh, time paradigms that uh, belong to this particular era in time. When we study representations of a foreign society, this brings us back to the principles that structure our own paradigms. Possibly, we are justified in thinking that the field of maritime anthropology, far from uh, inhabiting the margin of uh, maritime anthropology, is going, on the contrary, to to invade the heart of the matter, the sea being submitted to a number of stakes, institutional, legislative, political, economic, and the sea is going to become a fundamental human space in the 21st century.